one. Welcome to Craig Owala, the KO Koala Entertainment Halo Podcast. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We today I'm joined with. So my name is Anthony Nicolosi, Bram Walla from KO Koala Entertainment. I am joined with the two hooligans. Introduce yourselves, gentlemen. Who's first? <laughs> you guys are idiots. You guys are both looking at the camera. I am in, I, I am joined by one, the one and only Potato Man. Introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Potatoes and I play Halo. Yeah. <laughs> I got your Potatoes Halo, for those yeah. in the Kale Qual community who may have seen his name. Um, And who are you, Marcus? I am Marcus. <laughs> I'm uh, better known in the... Koala, Koala, Koala community as the editor of the Wallace. Correct. And I like Halo. That is who you are. Uh, and you like Halo Reach more than the other Halos. Reach so, is my favorite for sure. So if you want to, if you're listening and you want to immediately discredit him now, we have given you all the information you need to do so. Uh, this week, last week we talked about the controversy surrounding the armor coatings and the fact that Halo Infinite is going free to play and the ramifications of microtransactions and all that shit. This week, we are starting simple. At least the, the premise of the topic is simple. We'll see where it takes us. Are we still excited about Halo Infinite after everything we've seen? So, the fuck happened to Marcus? <laughs> Marcus just like fell off or he'll come back. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll we'll keep rolling. Um lots of lots of controversy surrounding Halo Infinite already early on. Uh first and foremost, I don't know, should we keep going or should we wait for him? I think he's gone, gone. Because he left stream. There he is. Marcus. Oopsie. What are you doing? Marcus. <laughs> I'll have to cut this. <laughs> Marcus, yes. what the fuck are you? <laughs> he says he can't hear or something. Marcus, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Why okay, are we? I'm ready. Are you sharing your stream with us? Oh, that's yes. what is going on. Is that I why you couldn't? This is going to be my face from now on. Okay. <laughs> I am going back to this. There we go. That's what the stream can see. So, let's start from here. This week's topic, uh, simple premise. Are we still excited for Halo Infinite? We'll see where this conversation takes us. Are we still excited for Halo Infinite after... The controversy that's come out so far, right? Starting with the gameplay reveal. I think that's probably where we should start. And then the some of the information we've gotten since then. Armor Coatings was one of those things that we talked about last week. But in addition, there's the recent um, leaving of Chris Lee that has happened. Uh, you know, so anyway, all that kind of stuff. Let me ask you, Potatoes, are you still excited? For Halo Infinite today. Yes, 100%. Um, there's a lot of things that uh, come to my mind that make Halo Infinite still interesting and shows that the 343 team really cares about the game. Like, for, for instance, the leaving of Chris Lee. Like, they saw that uh, from all the tweets that and stuff that went out that Chris Lee wasn't, like, what's the word, like, uh... I don't know. He just wasn't like super into making the game. He lost like all. I can't think of the word right now. He just like they saw that he wasn't too interested and he wasn't uh, trying hard to fix the game. So they had to bring in Joe Stanton and stuff. And uh, he he either I don't know what happened. They like fired him or uh, he left by himself. I'm Where'd you get that sure. information from? I don't think that's necessarily uh, accurate. I'm sure some fucking Halo YouTuber bullshitted it up, but like, I don't think there's actually any concrete information that Chris Lee 
didn't did or didn't want to continue on the project. So from the no, actual, I'm not saying that he didn't want to. It just he didn't have. A, I don't really know what I forgot what the word was. It's like an easy word. I don't know why, but um, like he didn't have like a hundred percent focus. Like a hundred percent, he's gonna make it the best he can. He just was kind of like there. But uh, is not, that a rumor? Because I don't think he. No, actually... they said they said uh, in one of their tweets. I think it was uh, not. Uh, it wasn't Unishek. It was someone else. Hmm. What's uh? Yeah, whatever. It's I not mean, that topic. it could. Somebody might have said something. As far as I know, nothing of the sort was said, and I don't want. It was a big name in. Uh, yeah, I don't want to like spread misinformation. I think like the facts. The, the only facts we have is that Chris Lee is still a Microsoft employee, but he's not at 343 anymore. Um, and it's unclear exactly. There's There was the Jason Schreer Bloomberg report that was, that, uh, was stating that um, basically after the gameplay reveal, after the campaign reveal, his position sort of stopped existing a couple weeks later is what they the way they put it more or less. So implying that maybe Chris Lee was asked to step aside, you know, because I mean, well, th- anyways, this is speculation, but like maybe because of the way that the campaign um, reveal was sort of received by the community, I would say generally, uh, generally underwhelming at least is the way I would say it, that because of that, he was asked to step aside and Joe came in and all that stuff. But yeah, that's well, from still anyways, technically from the point, speculation. The point what I was saying is that since 343 brought in Joe Staten and the other guy, um, that it shows that 343 really cares about the game. Um, like Because they saw that all the negative feedback, I guess, from people, which I didn't have any problems with the gameplay reveal or anything i just saw that three for three was listening to their fans up to a certain point and things like they can't give fans whatever they want but they still are trying to reach out to the fans and give them something of what they want uh which is pretty good considering they're a triple a studio and all that um and uh i guess that just that makes me like super Hype for Halo Infinite still and all these other things, like which Halo YouTubers were saying, is that <clears throat> 343 <clears throat> is trying to make like a, what did they say? A new, frick, I can't, like a like, new reboot, a spiritual reboot of the yeah, game. Yeah, all this. Yep. yeah there, uh, there's a couple of Halo YouTubers that are making fun of that, that they're not. Uh, they're fi- making a spiritual reboot. They're not coming up with anything new or anything. And I think it's completely opposite because they're doing the spiritual reboot to fix their mistakes in Halo 4 and Halo 5. And that's just making it super, I guess, like s- makes the game and 343 shows that they care about the game and they want to do it as best as they can, trying to <clears throat> not really copy Halo 1, but just like do Halo 1, but as like best as they can but different at the same time which makes i mean which is making me super hyped for the game to come out even though i don't know when it's release date i'm pretty sure like if we don't hear anything in december it's for sure uh 2021 holidays release that's just my guess and i i all i can say is you think holiday 2021 if they don't say anything december or january that's my my guess okay um, Marcus, what do you think? Well, I'm Are you still excited. Uh, yeah, I am also very excited for uh, Halo Infinite. I remember watching the gameplay reveal. I was ready to play the game after that reveal. I mean, I understand all of the um, visual shortcoming, graphical shortcomings, and everything that people saw, but I just saw, you know, I saw Chief run, I saw Chief shoot, I saw you know the the battles and everything i was like damn i want to i want to get in like the watching watching the guns like it just like oh i could tell they would they would feel so good to shoot um i'm so stoked to see what what they do with the banished and everything it's going to be really cool um i kind of 
uh, what uh, Potatoes was saying with how YouTubers are kind of making fun of how they're, you know, trying to make this spiritual reboot, trying to go back to the roots, I guess, and people making fun of that is um, sort of what I've been thinking and saying for a while is that um, the problem with the Halo fan base right now is that no matter what 343 does, like, it's going to be hated, you know, like, the the fan base is, uh, not all the fan base, but there is a good chunk of the fan base that's that says, oh, like, if they, if 343 does something new, like, oh, come on, we want to do, we want some of the classics, we want something old, like, why do you have to be changing things up? But then if they do something, you know, old school, they're like, oh, you're not innovative enough, you're not uh, changing things up, like, you're not taking these risks, and it's like, in that sense, 343 can't win. Um, and it really uh, is disappointing to see that, you know, strong, because if you're, if you're going to make a, a YouTube channel about Halo, you're a pretty big Halo fan. And for you to, I guess, discredit what 343 is doing, because they're, do, they're doing old school, which is contrary to what they've done to Halo 4 and 5, it's just complete bullshit why anybody would be mad about that. I'm sorry, but Halo Infinite is going to be a great game because they're going to combine the old and the new to make an amazing masterpiece of a game. So I'm extremely excited. What is the thing that has you most... What are you most excited for? Like gameplay, story, uh, the cosmetics... Well, obviously, I'm I'm excited about the cosmetics. Obviously, I'm excited to um, jump into Halo Infinite SWAT and, uh, you know, pop some heads. But I'm so incredibly excited to see what Chief does in this campaign. Like, I want to see what Bro Hammer, what his role is in all this. I want to see, you know, the Banished. I want to see some Atriox action. Like, that's some of the biggest things i'm looking for is how the crazy things that they could do with this story because they have they've set themselves up pretty strong strongly using because like i can't remember who said it i think maybe the actor man said it but he um by three for three using the banished they have given themselves a lot of creative freedom you know in terms of enemies and weapons and vehicles and storyline and everything because this isn't the covenant this isn't the covenant that we've seen in halo 2 and halo 3 that are super and halo 1 that were super um like religious and like you knew who, who they were and what their goals were and everything this is the banished like the the uh the the part of like the faction of uh, in the halo lore um, or in the Halo uh, universe that the Covenant couldn't stand a chance against, you know? And it's like, it's so exciting to see how Chief is going to deal with that. So I am super, super excited what they're going to do with this story. So, What about you, Potatoes? What are you most excited about? <clears throat> I am for sure super excited about the story after reading Shadows of Reach, which I can't really say about because somebody in this Marcus freaking fuck, dude. chat. <laughs> but uh, well, if they made a game about it, I'd be, I'd be on that shit right away. We're just yeah. going to spoil it for you. Once Mateusz finishes it, we're just going to talk about it. No, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I'm for sure going to bring up some stuff in this thing that I'm saying right now. But uh, it's, for sure, the book doesn't have to. You don't have to read the book to play Halo Infinite and get it. But um, I'm super excited because the banished freaking holy crap, Eshram, the uh, keepers, and all this stuff, like all packing together, trying to find this. Uh, I can't say it. Uh, the the main goal is to bring Atrox back, which makes me have like super high hopes. He's going to be in infinite which i'm really super excited for for chief and atriox battle uh even the chief and eshron battle will be super sick maybe we'll get some medicate bias we'll find out if chief is actually uh something to do with the isodidact i don't know there's just so much stuff that could happen in halo infinite that i'm super hyped for uh that's like super main thing and then i just re recently watched the gameplay trailer for 
Halo Infinite, and I was at the beginning when I watched it, I saw the pistol. I was like, "Oh shit!" I hope that's not the main pistol. And then I rewatched the pistol. I was like, "Holy crap! That pistol looks freaking awesome!" <laughs> like, I don't know if it's just because I'm like in a huge like hate the dryness that Three Four Three has produced the sidearm uh, for Halo. from Infinite. Yeah, the pistol. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, cause like. I don't know, just because I haven't seen too much things coming out content-wise from 343 showing things about the game besides the uh, coatings or whatever. But I saw that pistol shooting and, like, the recoil and all these other things with the pistol, the reticle and everything. It just was like, that looks freaking awesome. And, like, when I first watched it, I was like, eh, I hope that's not your main pistol. It's like, fifth, sixth time I watched it, I was like, that shit looks awesome. So I'm that excited is- about campaign and, campaign and multiplayer so, and, uh, and like, game gameplay in the campaign. Like, just you, what you're doing in the open world. It just all is, like, super hype. I think... Created, I mean, three for three is super smart for doing an open world. I I know I said before that I think it's a stupid idea, but now my uh, thoughts are changing, and I just am super hyped for the game. I don't think there's anything they could do. They can make cause like uh, armor coatings thirty dollars each. The game a hundred bucks. There's no way I want to buy that. So yeah, I agree that three four three did a really good job um, with making infinite open world. Because what they essentially did from the second I saw the Discover Hope trailer, like what happened to Chief and like Bowhammer and all these things, 343 essentially like took the smoldering wreckage of Halo 5's story and just swept it away and gave themselves a clean slate. They gave themselves the banished. They gave themselves this open world experience. And like they have so much opportunity to do like just super fucking badass things and i'm just i'm so yeah. excited to see what they can do like they have a completely cl- they made themselves a completely clean slate yeah i totally agree with you i think like dumb you haven't you can't just just you haven't read the book but like there you could tell that they're trying not to drop off the star of halo 5 because like you can't just make cortana this like evil overlord of all the freaking computer technology and stuff around the world uh, around the universe like this unsc is scared of her so like they're still trying to fight cortana but then they bring in the banished which makes it so much cooler and that's like the banisher like i think is a way cooler enemy than cortana could ever be because like i kind of i didn't like the prometheans i didn't like the uh, that that kind of thing. I just think that adding brutes in, even though I don't like brutes, I like killing them more. Uh, killing them more than I like killing elites because they're not as cool and they're just annoying. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. I, let me answer. Let let me answer first before I move on to asking you something about what you actually said regarding three four three releasing content around infinite and everything. Uh, potatoes, but. Am I still excited for Infinite? Fuck yeah, I am. You know also why, at least me personally? I feel for like the content creators, the primary Halo content creators right now. I feel for like the pro players or those like aspiring esports players right now who are waiting for the new thing and the new thing quite frankly is directly affecting their livelihoods in some case. Like I get it, I feel for them. But for me personally, I uh, I have so much other stuff going on in my life that if this thing doesn't come out until 2024, I don't give two fucks. And in fact, I hope it comes out in 2024 if that's what it takes for it to blow my b- ass off. Cool. You know, to be that cool, right? I do not care that they delay it. I hope they delay it to the holidays because I feel like based off of what was shown... That the gameplay, there were some elements of the gameplay that was shown in June that my gosh did not look anywhere close to done. Like, specifically the texture pop ins and like the textures themselves that were being used, and the lighting was fucking awful in some spots. I can't believe they released that. Um, let me find it real quick. That 
screenshot to like in their official press release. Let me find it. The one where like the brute is looking to the side. If you know what I'm talking about, it's like they're all yeah. Craig. No, not not, uh, not Craig. <laughs> Oh, Craig uh, is good funny. Boy, like, Craig he's like completely Dude, I, th- I think th- I think they put Craig in the lore. I, I heard someone say something about that. I don't, I don't know if it's true, but I think they did. Oh, I agree. Like, why would they release that picture? Like that picture. This one. Like our, our Chip or Skyler is a. Uh, uh isn't a Halo fan and he thought it was from like what Halo 3 and it's Look like this. damn that's not looking good what the fuck yeah. this looks like, <laughs> like PlayStation that... 2 man like right here Very the grunt bad. in the the grunt in the darkness and everything digital foundry did a good video breaking down on exactly what's going on here and um blah 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 ray tracing should theoretically help situations like that but that looks so bad so bad like the, here's the thing in my opinion historically 343 has had vision problems if you will like what their vision for the franchise is what their goals for the franchise are and how that lines up with what the community is looking for when they what they have not had are technical issues like 343 uh halo 4 regardless of what anyone thinks looked fucking amazing for a 360 game uh, it still looks good. It still blows out. It blows Halo Infinite out of the water from a graphics perspective. Um, Halo 5, running at 60 frames per second um, and maintaining it fluidly in the campaign had some beautiful parts, blah, blah, blah. Uh, impressive technical feats all around. So, like, that part of 343, in my opinion, has always been top-notch, the technical aspect. But that's the problem (laughs) so like what looks the vision right now for halo infinite actually looks good or at least like you guys are saying i'm super excited for the way the story is pitched the fact that it's a fucking mystery like holy shit what happened especially like mateus just saying in light of shadows of region stuff he doesn't even know yet because he didn't even finish it um in light of some of the things that are in Shadows of Reach stuff, it even adds to them. It's like, what is going on in Infinite for things to be at where they, they're they at? Um, it's uh, they, They've said, like, the spiritual re- reboot aspect of it, similar to Halo 1, you wake up in a universe that has a war going on, blah, 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 and you don't really know the full details. Um, that's awesome. And you, another thing that Bungie... Uh, was a core tenet of Bungie's development of Master Chief as a character was that the player and Master Chief should at any given time know the exact same amount, if that makes sense. So as you progress through the original trilogy, as Chief found out about his stuff, so did you, right? And that's going to happen again with Infinite. Chief is like literally doesn't know what has transpired just as much as you do when that starts, you see, we saw that cutscene at E3, whatever, 2019. That's cool. That's, that's awesome. I'm very excited about that, that angle that they're taking on the story. Um, the banish I'm super excited about because they're, I don't know. They're just more savage, right? Like they're just, yeah, they're like the most badass enemy. They don't give a fuck about like, Oh, you know zealous religious pursuits of like we have to do the yeah. great journey they're just like i'm here to fucking kill you you know like I mean, like bring atriox back and kick some ass that's like all that's going through their mind yep i like i like that element the stuff that could happen on zeta halo is crazy i'm also i personally when they um when there was when some information started to come out that indicated that maybe halo infinite was going like a destiny style direction I am personally totally on board on the, with that. If you told me that I could fly around some worlds or forerunner constructs inside of the Halo universe, run quests and stuff, obtain cool shit, I'm down. Like I, I would be super down for, with that for Halo Infinite. I hope it doesn't have some of the bullshit grindy aspects that Destiny has. Like I don't necessarily hope it's an exact copy, but the idea, I'm just thinking, right? Like... What if you had a DLC 
pack where you're fucking go into the arc to fight with red team on the spirit of fire you know what if you have a dlc where a fucking flood ship crashes on some ring you know what if you have a dlc where you need to run some oni mission and then you end up finding like the forerunner capital city and so like there's so much cool shit you could do lore wise with that kind of destiny style approach in my opinion you'd go to cool places you could have cool lore add-ons um i'm really excited about that part but the uh the the anyway i'm really excited about that part the multiplayer remains to be seen like based off of the little bit of shooting that happened in the campaign gameplay I'm thinking, ooh, looks fun to shoot. You know, you can, you can, I don't know about you guys, but after playing a bunch of Halo 5, you can almost feel those guns, like as they're shooting. Yeah, you're like, yeah, oh, I have totally. a pretty good idea of how that will actually feel to shoot, and it's exciting. Um, things remain just to be seen. I hope, I don't know. I, I say I hope they don't have a Battle Royale just because it means they spent a lot of time on that and not on something else. Maybe the Battle Royale would be like a good, a version of it that I like. Uh, so anyway, on the multiplayer front, I th- I'm excited that all of these big con- uh, esports guys are jumping in. Cloud Nine, Sentinels, and all these guys there. They're participating. You know, there's going to be more envy. Uh, Space Station Gaming was even like um, indicating that they might jump in. NRG maybe getting in there. So that's uh, anyway. That's all epic. It's all exciting. And from my perspective. Delay it until it's at the point where next time I see it, I'm like, holy fuck, that's epic. That's amazing. And I don't need it any sooner than that, personally. That's what I think. That's what I think. I think what you're saying about the esports teams, because, like, when Halo 5 was, like, in its prime esports, it just switched over to MLG from uh, whatever it's called, ESL. Uh, There was, like, only a couple. Like, Optic was in there, but they left. The only big ones in Halo, big uh, esports companies in Halo Infinite were Envy and Cloud9. And like now you're saying that NRG might do it, Space Station, uh, all these big, huge esports companies. Didn't Optic was in there? Well, dude, first of all, Cloud9 left. They, they're, oh, yeah, they're back Cloud9 now, but they, yeah. they left. Envy left. Literally everyone left. Like, yeah, nobody was left, and now they're all coming back. So. Yeah, but then they're getting more huge esports companies, which makes like them know something about Halo Infinite. You're thinking, and like if they want in, like you know that it's going to be an awesome multiplayer. Yeah, well, it's you know honestly, it has to be because it's free to play. Like from yeah. a business perspective, your experience has got to be good because if it's not good. All that happens is a player just doesn't play it and they just leave. They don't spend any money in your ecosystem for that business model to work. The game has got to be good. It's got to be able to retain players enough that they want to eventually spend money in that ecosystem. And it's not, and for that to be a thing, esports is a big, is very important because like we've, we've talked about it before, but um, esports is a huge motivator for play, right? Like, yeah. In any any almost any uh, esport I ever watch, watching it makes me want to play that. Halo Five was like super like that, right? Watching fucking Frosty, uh, you know, taking somebody out while um, Snake Bite and Royal Two are like, um, what's it called? Oh my gosh, flanking, flanking. And cleaning people up and shit. Like, you're like, fuck, I want to jump into Halo 5 and I want to play some games. I want to get the crew together and roll. That is a very important thing in in free-to-play games. Just helps motivate people to play again. When you purchase a game for $60, first of all, you already gave them $60. So they, they made $60 from you already, and they're set. Second of all, though psychologically humans have the tendency of like, I've spent money on this thing. Like I'm going to at least try it a little more or whatever, because I spent money. Like I've I put money into this thing. I need to get something out of it. Kind of. Yeah. You don't need to do that. If it's free, you're just like well, fucking uninstalling, especially on top of that, especially on top of that. It's like, if you, if it takes up some space, it's like, I don't know. I'm an uninstalling. So I don't want to <laughs> yeah. 
How many times have I fucking uninstalled and reinstalled Fortnite or Apex Apex when you guys come over and you're like trying to play it and I just uninstall it because it's free. I like, I don't, (laughs) that's going to be the reality. It has to be good. It has to be good for you to then with the next time you go over to that person's house, want to redownload it. Like you do for Apex, like you did to for Fortnite. Cause like people are like, Oh, I have my main game, Sea of Thieves, Halo five, uh, whatever, another big one, Call of Duty, and they're all like Minecraft. huge. Yeah, no, Minecraft's not huge. Uh, like huge, like oh, yeah, gigabytes true. wise. Mm-hmm. Like they take up your whole X uh, yep. space on your thing, and you're like, I don't want to delete these games because I actually play them. And if I'm gonna have Halo Infinite sitting here and I don't play it, what's the point of keeping it on here? So like that's 100. percent If anything, I think the fact that it's free to play makes me that it's free to play and that all of these esports big esports organizations are jumping in those two things give me confidence yeah, that the multiplayer it, yeah. will be good well it shows that 3 for 3 is confident that the multiplayer is going to be good yeah I, I get expect, I'm sorry say it Marcus what do you guys expect from this multiplayer that's going that like will make it good cuz i remember when Halo 5's multiplayer first came out a lot of people were very mad because there was like nothing like no that, modes. that it offered it was like, yeah, there was almost no modes. What do you guys expect like, like, in terms of modes, in terms of maybe like mechanics? Like, uh, is there going to be a boost? Um, are they going to let Spartan abilities? Um, all that stuff. What do you guys expect for there to be a great Halo Infinite multiplayer? I think that there's not going to be any Spartan charge or ground pound. I'm pretty sure that was universally hated by literally everyone. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So if they put that in, I'm going to be like, okay, have it in here. I'm not going to use it or play like ranked modes where it's not in the game. So like, I think that would be stupid if they added that in. But I think they're for sure going to have a lot of game modes at the beginning because I saw their mistakes from Halo 5. Um, There might be some cool new game modes they might have oddball in from the beginning uh like they added oddball they took out griff ball from halo 5 which i don't know because the griff ball community is really big in halo uh, i think they'll have that in for sure though uh infection all these other games um and plus like with the ability to grapple and grapple like these bombs you <laughs> throw at people and casual mode, that could be pretty fun, in my opinion. I could make some amazing custom games. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, curious to see what the multiplayer plays like. To first to answer your question in regards to mechanics, I mean, what we saw in the, in the actual gameplay reveal indicates that there's no thrust, which is an interesting one because I actually thought thrust was one of the best ones and the ones yeah, that people sure. felt uh like added i, I anyway it, ha- it definitely had impacts impact on the sandbox design but i thought it was something that added to the halo formula because you could like joust people in midair right you could like jump dash and i don't know yeah um so i'm a little Would surprised really that's see, gone what you say you really see big little chief threat like he's a big boy in Halo infinite do you see him thrusting i mean but th- like technically from a lore perspective he was just as big of a boy although i i yeah, but... think hidden Xperia said somewhere in i don't know if it was in shadows of reach or something conf- kind of confirmed that the iteration of i think it's mark 7 gen 3 armor that they have now might not have boost like a uh, thrust like there was something but in it that said it you also didn't. have to think because like will thrust work with chief like the answer is like completely yes because chief can like run like a million miles per hour no offense or anything so like thrust would totally work yeah i mean uh, yeah. well th- th- technically from a physics standpoint the way the grapple hook works in the game is doesn't make sense it's like yeah this big <laughs> ass dude who like that's two thousand pounds, right? Something yeah, and like that. he like get, pulls himself towards an enemy. That is not how that. Yeah. Works. Like, <laughs> so it, the lore informs the gameplay, right? To some like the gameplay decisions are made, and then the lore sort of excuses it and everything. But uh, anyway, like that's 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 here there. I think the if you look back at Halo Five, what what were some of the things that I heard it at launch. You guys said some of the uh, the things already. The fact that it had a very small amount of playlists, and it was like I would say t- competitive focused. 
you know, at launch. That's, yeah. I, I think you need to have like the playlist that basically Halo 5 has now, like the casual offerings and the competitive rankings. Like at custom launch. games. But yeah, maybe you can have like a few things out. Yeah, definitely custom games. You got to have Forge. You got to have Forge at the beginning because that incentivizes, especially in P- on P- the PC side of things, the community to start building out maps for custom games. You got to have that shit at launch. It's just. That's when the hype's going to be the highest. You got to let the PC community go at it. Like they're going to jump in and be like, "Oh shit, look, this forge is crazy." I I I've got to imagine the forge is going to be like Halo 5 but even better somehow. So like what if you can like spawn AI and shit? So you give that to the PC community right at launch. They're going to start building out crazy shit. You have the custom browser and all that stuff. You need that shit at launch. So that's one thing. But the other thing is that Halo 5 generally from a gameplay perspective and this could be maybe one of the reasons they like nixed thrust and maybe some of the other things was it had a really high skill floor in my opinion. Oh for, yeah, for sure. For you to like be a noob. I mean, we talk to people in our Discord server who like jump into Halo 5 or and, and like are like totally they're not bad video game players. They're fucking like champ three and rocket league but they jump into halo 5 they played other shooters and they just get their ass kicked in halo 5 because there's a significant amount of stuff to learn if you're not already a halo player one and then two with all the mechanics and the chaining of mechanics and shit it just raises the skill floor even more the way the sandbox was designed like that's another thing but that played into that but just to say i i think that's the main thing from a to hit widespread success, they've got to figure out a way to bring that skill floor down. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, not drag the skill ceiling down in the process. I think the movement mechanics and everything like that. I don't know if you guys watch Shyway. Do you guys know who Shyway is? The, I've uh, heard the name. No. So he, he's been posting recently on Twitter. I recommend anybody who's listening to this go check them out if you uh, like um Halo content, especially competitive, competitive focus content. He's been doing like these videos of him, like chaining mechanics and like thrust sliding all over like fucking truth and stuff. And it's, it's really cool, but it, and it, and it definitely adds to the skill ceiling, but it's just another thing. Like it just kind of goes to show how overwhelmed a player can be with all the things you could do. So I don't know. I I I I am not. I hope I hope they can figure out a way to do that. Bring down the skill floor while not nuking the high skill ceiling that I think they kind of had arrived to with Halo Five in lots of ways. So I don't know. That that's what I think. Those are the two main things. Have everything at launch and figure out a way to bring that skill floor down. Um, All right. So I think what Halo Infinite. Needs to get rid of a hundred percent that Halo Five had was freaking incineration cannons and hydro launchers. <laughs> I would never want to see those guns in my life again. I hated why them. Why incineration cannons? Like, what's dude? How much? You literally why do walk they... around the corner. Someone's crouching in the corner, holding that shit, and they look at you. The blast is so big you can't dodge it, and if you see them, the it's so fast you can't dodge it either. So there's nothing you can do about it. Someone's crouching in the corner with a thing. But how is nothing. that different from like a rocket launcher in that Dude, rocket, scenario? Rocket launchers aren't as fast. And the like the bullet isn't like five, like 40 feet long. So you can't get out of the way of it. And they're not as fast. <laughs> I can see them taking out the hydro launcher because they do that a lot of times in Halo games. Like they introduce a, a gun like the yeah, like a brute shot just never comes back again yeah exactly what the fucking oh, sticky detonator oh that was a good yeah one. exactly like that was a that was a great one. but anyways um but the incineration cannon has had two games so far so i have a feeling it's going to come back so what would you think they should do with the incineration cannon that wouldn't make it as bullshit actually i what? wonder right i wonder if the yeah. Promethean weapons will come back, considering we've seen no Promethean, uh, no evidence true. that the Prometheans are in. And actually, what I think if, that could be cool. What if the Banished have Promethean weapons? I, Dude, it, yeah, what, they could. They could. But, it, like, but you have to think, because like, the Hall of Shadows of Reach are scared to have a battle with the Banished and Keepers on Reach because they're going to alert Cortana. And Cortana basically has a whole army of Prometheans. 
And so if they have a battle on Z- Z- Zeta Halo with uh, the Banish and it's a giant battle, Cortana for sure will know about that. And somehow she'll get there, spawn the freaking Guardians, and there will be uh, incineration cannons. That's my guess. I that would be pretty cool to see how that. Would you, how would you have the incineration cannons work in Halo Infinite then? Let's just not have them in there at all. <laughs> <laughs> what if they're like, we're going to put them in there? And Honestly, like, they could have you to make it more balanced. Halo Four incineration cannons were like, so they were so overpowered, like even more than Halo Five. But if they, because they were slow enough, so you could see it coming. But they once it hit, it had a big blast around it, which would like incinerate you like thirty feet away. Which I think they don't do the bounce after the shot, and it's just a normal like rocket, uh, whatever thing kind of energy it uses. Just a little, little of that, and making it less powerful, in my opinion. Okay, so uh, I think maybe the last thing to talk about is uh, how do you guys feel about the way content's been coming out since the gameplay reveal, or? how it's not been <laughs> coming out um and how is it affecting how hyped you are and whatever you you made mention of like they don't they don't release anything and so you're just getting more excited about the pistol <laughs> yeah that that kind of is it but <laughs> i mean i think cuz like so all of halo 4 uh release some of halo 5 i was still like like, I was into Halo, but not, like, super into it like I am now. So, like, I didn't care about what they were releasing or anything. I just waited for the game to come out and played it. And that was basically the same with Halo 5. I just watched, I, like, watched, I read, listened to all of Hunt the Truth, watched all the trailers and stuff, and um, watched Nightfall. Uh, but, like, that was pretty cool. Uh, but like I'm used to not getting anything before a Halo game because that's how I was basically the and not really Halo Five, but for sure Halo Four and Halo Reach. That's the time like I could actually think of like playing games and stuff. That was, but um, I I'm used to it. I'm sad that they're not producing more because I'm into it more. But now I I can just I'm just focusing on getting Champ and Rocket League and Onyx and Halo Five. I don't really care about the content so i mean they're they're coming out with because i'm just ready for a big big surprise on release date that's okay i'm kind of wanting them to be put to come out with stuff um i kind of understand why they might not be doing that right now because um like what if the the graphics and everything of everything they put out is just going to be dog shit and so like it would every single con- piece of content they reveal would end up you know crashing and burning and it would just be a, an insanely stupid strategy for them um so i kind of understand why but i really think if they want people to be like okay infinite is coming halo is going to make a return everybody's going to love it it's going to become mainstream because, like you guys said last time, Halo's again, Halo is, has become somewhat niche. Um, for them to escape that uh, reality, they need to be, you know, putting out a lot of stuff before Infinite in order to be like, okay, it's coming, it's coming, and then bang, Halo Infinite is a masterpiece. Like, so. I, my, my, how I thought they were going to handle marketing going into Halo Infinite, um, was they were just going to say nothing until they showed the game. And then after they showed the game, they were just going to go ham until release. I bet you that that is largely what was going to happen and what would have happened. Imagine, like, think about this. After they did the game, the campaign gameplay, what other kinds of announcements would they have had? The multiplayer one. And all the fucking shit about the multiplayer. There's got to be tons of shit they need to tell us about the multiplayer. Even if it was basically just Halo 5, that's still a ton of stuff they need to cover. 
that's on top of uh, that, that for sure they're going to have new stuff all the new guns the fucking different modes the different maps there's shit tons of content i think what would have happened is you would have had just 3 months of halo overload and then it would have released right so i'm guessing they are just going to again shush up until they hit that 3 month window and then they'll go ham until release. I, and quite frankly, I know Halo people will hate that. Bec- like, if you, all you really care about from in a gaming sphere, which I I think we know a lot of people in the Halo community kind of feel like that. Like, the main thing they care about, uh, and almost maybe the only thing they care about in the gaming space is Halo. Um, they would hate that approach. But for the average person, average gamer, there's so many games going on all the time, blah, 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 that I actually think that's not a bad strategy. I think trying to just win over Mindshare and meet up to launch, just like overwhelm people where they're just, everyone's just thinking about Halo, interested in Halo, excited about it, like just maintain that huge ball of hype and launch the game. That's what I think. Oh, uh, what was I going to say? That's what I think they're going to do, and I'm fine with it. I don't like I said. Oh, no. Yeah, what you're saying about the three months before the game comes out, they're coming out with a shit ton of content. That's why I'm suspecting that if they don't come any th- come out with anything, like any news during December or January, then it's for sure not a spring release because they're going to be pumping out shit from January on to May or April. Agreed. And that's when their time. That's why I'm thinking it's going to be holiday 2020, uh, holiday 2021. Oh, if, uh, that's what I wanted to say. Show. That's what I wanted to say. You just said that. I agree with what you just said, first of all. Uh, Sketch said they are going to have a high-level update in December. That's all he said. So we oh, will yeah, be yeah, hearing some that. amount of news about Halo Infinite. My guess is that they're going to say nothing meaningful, really. Maybe uh, release a screenshot or something. But um, I also agree that if it was going to be coming out at least early spring, I guess it could theoretically still be coming out in May, and you just like start releasing all kinds of stuff in February. I, I I think we would have seen stuff already if that were the case. Here is an interview that Phil Spencer just did recently that, in my opinion, is the strongest proof that Halo Infinite might not be coming until next holiday. Let me read what he says. Um, talking to GameStop... No, Shaq News said... He says, I wanted Halo Infinite at launch. There's no doubt about that. And we thought there would have been a special seminal moment because the last time we shipped a Halo and a console at the same time was the original Xbox. When Bonnie Ross, head of Halo, you know, of 343 and I were talking about it, there was something heartfelt about those two things coming together. But the safety and health of the team has to be first and foremost, and then the quality of the game, those things have to win over anything else, right? He continues. He says, uh, da, 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 da. I am an idiot, he said. Spencer pointed out that having Halo Infinite at launch title did not have much of an impact on sales of the Series S and X. You know why? Because getting enough supply to meet the demand is not happening. So, like, if, if Halo Infinite would have been the fucking banger of bangers... You can literally not sell more Xbox consoles than you can make. So they are already hitting their inventory capacity. So it doesn't matter that Halo is not there. From a Series S and X sales perspective, it does not matter that Halo is not there, is what he's saying. Because we're already selling as many as we can. So it doesn't matter. Um, He continues... And he says, sales are going to be dictated by supply this holiday, like I'm saying. And I know there will be press that want to write Xbox launch lineup versus PS5 launch lineup. But if they're both sold out completely, I'm not sure the launch lineup had much impact on anything maybe other than some review score, he said. It's not going to dictate what or how many consoles we sell. The number one thing that's going to dictate how many consoles we sell is not the competition and it's not Halo or a launch lineup. It's going to be how many units we can build. 
So he continues, he says, I think the possibility of Halo Infinite launching beside Xbox was more of a brand and heartfelt moment for us than it was critical to the launch. In fact, you could argue that holiday 2021 from a lineup is probably more important because from a competitive standpoint, both consoles, knock on wood, will have supply. So there will be demand constraint. There will be a demand constraint rather than a supply constraint in the next year. So he's basically, in my opinion, kind of implying that really it would be nice to have a killer Halo Infinite next year, not this year. What if they did this on purpose? What if they were like, oh, Series X and Series S are absolutely going to sell out. There's no need to release Halo Infinite uh, along with the consoles because it won't make an impact. So they're like, once the sales start to die down, we drop Halo Infinite and spike them back up again. Well, what if they knew this all along? Well, I I, th- I think that when <laughs> COVID they did, started, when COVID started and the Chinese supply chain issues started happening, I don't know about you guys, but like, dude, fucking like, oh, if COVID hadn't happened, I guarantee you, you wouldn't have some of the things like. Uh, like there's no controllers fucking anywhere for like the last five months. You can't find a fucking Xbox controller anywhere because they, they release like two new ones at a store every like month or whatever. Those kinds of things are reminiscent of the fact that Xbox PlayStation Nintendo, they know their supply. They just, they're not being able to pump out out as many as usual through their, you know, factories over in China um, so they're focusing that whatever amount of inventory they can churn out, they want to focus on that being the new consoles that are are going to be hitting this summer so that they can you know meet demand to some extent. So my guess is that when COVID, start, COVID started, you know these guys are all smart as shit with a fuck ton of data and insight that we will never have. Um, they saw all of these kinds of trends and yeah, maybe they did think ahead like, hey, Halo, I'm. They got to see the builds, right? They got to be looking at the builds. Their decades of experience. They knew. I'm. I guarantee you. They knew all of these issues before they show, showed them. And they are. They're thinking to themselves like, okay, what's the game plan? Blah blah blah. Weighing all these things. And yeah, maybe it's like, hey, Halo needs more time. We are not going to be be able to meet supply this holiday anyway. Let's just delay it. I think the fact that they don't say spring or something like that, and they never said that, indicates that, yes, they were forward-thinking. That you have Joe Staten coming in, Pierre Hines on the multiplayer. That's actually interesting. I'm surprised that they brought in Pierre to lead multiplayer instead of one of the existing multiplayer directors for Halo Infinite, like Tom French or Quindel Hoyo. It, it's, I, I would have expected maybe one of those kinds of people to be promoted than moving the MCC guy over. I'm not mad. MCC is fucking awesome. And they did a, they're doing a great job on MCC. I'm just surprised. And I don't know if that means that there's trouble on the multiplayer side of things. Maybe do we not know that Tom French left? You know, I'm not sure. And like, he, we're going to find out soon. People who reported on the Chris Lee thing said that other changes at three, four, three were likely. So, Maybe that's maybe there's something there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Holiday 2021. Those Phil Spencer comments really make me think that's a thing. That would be that would be really cool. I'd be I'd be happy with Holiday 2021. Just more time to make Halo Infinite more awesome. You yeah. and I'm cool with that. Marcus to finish reading Shadows of Reach. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you're probably gonna need to give me more than a year. <laughs> All right, dudes. Very good. So next time, we'll see what we talk about. If you're listening in the audience, you can find this right now on YouTube. Uh, If we can maintain some consistency, I told the guys that maybe you will be able to listen to it on your favorite podcast directories as well, Spotify and whatever. So you let us know. Do you you like watching it on YouTube? Would you prefer it to be an audio format? like only audio format let us know let us know what topics you want us to discuss we've got some ideas too and until next time you can find uh, all the links to our social media on kaokoalaentertainment.com instagram discord the whole bunch 
Thanks again for listening. Hasta la vista. Peace out. So long. Bye-bye. See ya.